Every particle of rock must be carefully removed with enormous patience and absolute precision. The end results reveal that trilobites molded their external skeletons into an almost unbelievable variety of shapes. And that enabled them to colonize a great variety of habitats just as modern arthropods still do today. There are about 50,000 different trilobite species that we know of, and doubtless there are still many more to be discovered. Their hard exoskeletons not only ensured their abundance in the fossil record, they also tell us a lot about their owners' lives. Many of the trilobites that are found in these cliffs are curled up, like this one. Sometimes even more tightly than this is, with their tail tucked underneath their heads. And it's clear that this was some kind of protected posture, just as it is for some kinds of wood lice that you find in the garden today. That protected them against their enemies. But there are so many that are curled in these deposits, together with others that have their backs arched upwards and others in other strange postures, that it seems that they're the victim of some kind of catastrophe. The sea floor, it seems, was quite steep. And every now and again, the mud that accumulated on the bottom slipped down in a submarine avalanche, carrying the animals that lived in it and on it, higgledy-piggledy, and burying them alive. Moroccan trilobites are big business these days. Particularly rare species sell for thousands of pounds. The world's leading trilobite experts, such as Professor Richard Forty, come here to study these extraordinary animals. He believes that their external skeleton was the key to their success. The trilobites did almost everything you possibly can do with an exoskeleton. I think that skeleton was what gave them an advantage. They were protected. They could do all kinds of interesting things. They could grow spines. They could get flat like pancakes. They could protect themselves by getting thick exoskeleton with pobbles all over it. It was a great advantage to them, just as it is to crabs and lobsters living today which of course weren't around in the, at the time of the trilobites. So they utilized the virtues of having a tough exoskeleton uh, to radiate into all kinds of ecological niches. You can see one of the most comprehensive collections of these trilobite fossils just a few miles from where they're quarried at Erfoud Museum. collection here reveals just how varied the trilobite skeleton could be. There is no question that an exoskeleton gave the trilobites protection, but it also gave them something else of great value. There must have been many reasons why trilobites were so successful, but one of them unquestionably was their power of sight. They had eyes, not just eye spots that could tell the difference between light and dark, but complex eyes that could form detailed pictures of their surroundings for the first time in the history of life. Eyes like these. Most animals on Earth today have eyes of one kind or another. Most are made from soft tissue, as ours are. But trilobite eyes are unique. Their lenses are derived from their mineralized external skeleton. They're made of rock. Each
Each one of these little dots is a lens, and each is made from calcite, a crystalline form of chalk. Trilobites were the only organisms ever really to use this stuff as their lens material. And in doing so, they evolved very sophisticated vision indeed. For example, these sorts of trilobites had very large lenses, and each lens is readily visible with the naked eye, and each one is biconvex. And it's been proven that individual lenses had little bowls inside them to help them focus more precisely. These creatures were among the first, certainly, to, to actually focus a picture, weren't they? It wasn't just a question of telling light from dark. They could do better than that. Oh, no, these, these had really sophisticated vision. The kind of trilobites that have these eyes were probably hunters. Some people have claimed that they could form stereoscopic images using both eyes, so they could really home in on the prey. Many predators today, including ourselves, have 3D or stereoscopic vision. It makes it possible for a hunter to accurately judge the distance between itself and its prey. But not all trilobites were predators. Some were inoffensive creatures that lived by munching mud. But sight must have been valuable for them too, enabling them to spot enemies in time to escape. There are trilobite eyes with more than 5,000 lenses. 5,000? More than 5,000 lenses. Now, uh, each of those doesn't have an image? Each of those doesn't have an image, but if they go for lots of tiny lenses, they're particularly sensitive to movement, i.e. something changing between one lens and the next. This trilobite's eyes are so big, they extend right round its head and meet in the middle. And that suggests that the animal swam high above the sea floor and had a 360 degree view of the scene below. With each lens capable of detecting movement, its owner must have been able to see an enemy coming from any direction. But the shape of a trilobite's eyes can reveal more than the kind of image they produced. Eyes can tell us a surprising amount about how and where an animal lived. This one, with its eyes on turrets, probably lived in the sea where it was gloomy, but nonetheless there was enough light for the animal to be able to see on either side of it. This one, on the other hand, has eyes also on turrets, but at the top it has flanges like sunshades. So it's as likely that it lived in the shallow sunlit sea and valued shades above its eyes so it didn't get dazzled. This one, however, has very reduced eyes, and it may well be that it skated along the mud along the bottom where it was gloomy anyway and there wasn't much to see, so like an animal living in a cave, it slowly lost the use of its eyes. And finally, there's this creature, and this is the one I think is particularly delightful. This one has its eyes on stalks and probably lived under the mud, gobbling up food there with its, just its eyes peeking out of the top to see whether there was danger around. So trilobites were the first animals to see clearly, but they had other senses as well, perhaps some we don't even know about. Take this species with this bizarre trident structure on its nose. What was it for? Some kind of motion sensor? A prehistoric radar, perhaps? Trilobites were, without question, the most successful animals of their time. They flourished in all parts of the ocean. Indeed, they could be counted as one of the most successful kinds of animals in the entire history of life. Most trilobites are quite small, rather like beetles are today. But the biggest living beetle is about that big, the Goliath beetle. Trilobites, on the other hand, grew very big indeed, like this one. And this is by no means the biggest. Uh, the biggest known is nearly a metre, nearly three feet long. 
And it's thought that these really big ones grew to this size because they lived in cold waters. And that's a tendency of animals in cold to grow large. And at the time that these rocks were laid down, Africa, where we are now and where these are found, was down by the South Pole. Spectacular though these are, they were by no means the largest arthropods in the ocean at the time. The trilobites had remote cousins, also arthropods, that had grown into monsters. Their remains are much rarer and often fragmentary, but some of the most complete have been found in Scotland. One of the best is held in the vaults of Edinburgh's National Museum. Gosh, well, this is a magnificent example of just how big an animal can grow if it has an external skeleton. This is a creature called a Eurypterid, or a sea scorpion, and it was a hunter. It had a pair of powerful pincers at the top, just behind its head. It was obviously a monster, a terror of the seas. 